Hey guys, today I'm bringing you the ultimate guide to pickleball wall drills, and it's all coming to you from Lima, Peru. Let's get after Remember, it. Remember, when you're doing your dinking, to keep your body weight low and keep your contact out in front. When you go to do your dinking, make sure that you keep the contact out in front and you push through with your shoulder towards your intended target. You want to find a focal point on the wall that you can focus on and maintain your contact out in front. If you're finding value from these drills, guys, smash that like button. When you're dinking, you want to have a loose grip. On a scale between 1 and 10, it should be around a 3 or a 4, just enough to kind of feel the ball come off of your paddle. When you go to prepare your paddle, have it out in front pointing towards 11 o'clock. This will be helpful when balls are hit into your body because you'll utilize your backhand to fend off those shots. For your preparation, have your elbows slightly out in front of your hips, just enough to where you can stick a stick in between your arms and your body. This will keep your paddle out in front so then you're not hitting shots late behind your hips. At contact on your volleys, you want to maintain a stable wrist and lead with your shoulder. The more stable your wrist is and the more you lead with your shoulder, you're going to get a more solid hit on those volleys. Doing your volleys against the wall puts you seven feet away, which doesn't give you a whole lot of time to see the ball into your paddle. So pick a focal point on that wall and track the ball as best as you can. This is how you're gonna have the best reactions while still making the ball connect into your sweet spot. To prepare for your volleys, utilize your shoulders and hips. You want to turn your shoulders and hips like a gate. This will prepare your paddle without taking a backswing. There's no need to take a big backswing on your volleys. Just utilize your shoulders and hips. For maximum control on your punch volleys, you want to maintain a grip pressure about three or four and you want to extend through the ball towards your intended target. By extending through the ball towards the extended target, you're giving yourself the best opportunity to make solid contact and direct the ball to where you want it to go. On the drills where you have to tap the ball up in the air, they're all about developing a touch or a feel for the shot. So you want to have soft hands on that and when the ball is coming, you want to give it a little cut, to give it a touch of backspin so then the ball sits in the air. Remember, it's just about getting soft hands on that shot.
If you're finding value from these volley drills, guys, smash that like button. When you go to hit your volleys, try to maintain an open stance at all times, which means that you want your feet shoulder width apart and you don't want to have your feet crossing over. By doing this, you're more likely to keep your center of gravity and not get overextended where it's going to be hard to recover back. When you go to volley, ride the net low. This will help you react to those balls that are hit at your feet and also have your legs loaded for when you have to spring out to get those balls on the reach. When doing the reset drills, it's all about getting a feel for the ball so then you can have some touch to place that ball within the no volley zone. Remember, you have seven feet to work with, so give yourself some margin over the net when you're doing these drills. The spin that you select on your resets is up to you. Remember, when you go for a top spin reset, it's more offensive. And when you go for a back spin reset, it's a little bit more defensive. So utilize that knowledge when you determine which one you're going for. When you go to do your volley resets, whether it's out of the air or a half volley, it's all about control. Make sure that you maintain your contact out in front and you limit your backswing with just a little push to control that ball into the non-volley zone. If you're finding value from these tips and drills, do me a favor, smash the like button. After you hit your drive and you're coming into net, make sure that you give yourself a little split step or a little hop to where you land on the balls of your feet. This will help you keep your balance with your shoulders over your hips for the next ball. This is very important so when you're not caught overextended or leaning to where you're susceptible to getting lobbed or being off balance for the next oncoming ball.
On the ground stroke drills, you can do two stances. You can either hit the ball open stance, where your shoulders are over your hips, but there's some space in between your legs, or you can step forward where you're transferring your body weight through the ball towards your intended target. What you don't want to do is you don't want to step across where you're in more of a closed stance because now your body weight is going to be going away from your intended target and you could get overextended to where it's difficult to recover and prepare for the next oncoming ball. When you're doing the overhead drills on the wall, it's important that you're not falling backwards. I have seen players move backwards like this on their overhead and take a spill backwards. So number one, it's super important when you go to hit your overheads, that the first thing that you do when you see the ball go up is that you turn your shoulders and hips. This will allow you to move back and shuffle like a quarterback to prepare for that overhead. On the overhead drills, you want to have your shoulders and hips turned and you want your left hand extended up like you're an outfielder in baseball where you're going to catch the oncoming ball. By doing this, it kind of gives you a guide of where you want to make contact with the ball, which is above your head and out in front. The ideal situation on the overhead drills is that your body weight is on balance the whole time. You wanna have your body weight on balance where you're moving back with your shoulders over your hips and then your last step is forward going towards your intended target. However, this isn't always gonna be the case, but it's a good goal to strive for. Now that we've covered every stroke and drills that you can do on the wall, you guys are set to go level up your game. Make sure that you guys check out the playlist of all the wall drills and also check out this video here. I've had a ton of fun shooting these videos for you guys in Peru and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.